welcome to The Writer's Dream. This is a show where authors can talk about how they write their books, how they publish their books, and how they market their books. You can find us on YouTube. You just have to search my name, Linda Maria Frank, or The Writer's Dream. We're also on Facebook, and our page is called The Writer's Dream. Please like us on Facebook. Um, if you want to be on this show or you have a question for us, please message us through Facebook. Today's guest is Polly Rose Lipsome. Polly has been here a few times before. Yes. Twice before. <laughs> and she has a really unique story. Her story has to do with poetry. And what I have really learned in um, my five years practically here on uh, The Writer's Dream is that poetry is enjoying such a wonderful either rebirth or popularity or whatever you want to call it here on Long Island. There's a, a big poetry community. There's a lot of open mic uh, situations where uh, people read poetry in bars, restaurants, libraries. And also, you can read your poetry at uh, the gazebo in Oceanside. So poetry, tell us your story, because her story okay. is so unique. Well, this is the second part to the first part. And the first part started with Immortal Kisses, Confessions of a Poet. Mm -hmm. And after I finished that book that my mother had written, and after it was out, I decided to go through my mother's drawers that I had never been through before. Uh, she had passed away in 2008, and I never went through those drawers. And something just told me, now's the time. So that book had come out, and subsequently I went through these, I opened up the drawers, and I found these boxes of papers. And I said, my goodness, what is this? So I started to go through, and I found these notes that she had written, but they were really poetic notes. Mm -hmm. And then I said to myself, oh my god, I said, I just finished this book with all her poetry. I was killing myself because I said, my goodness, I have these few poems left and that I just discovered, and what am I going to do with them? And so what happened was I continued to go through the boxes, and with going through them, I found more than just a few. I found 136 poems that I never knew about, oh. that she never told me. And then I realized what had happened was she wrote these after my father had passed away. And I feel that she wrote them as therapy, and they were a catharsis. Mm -hmm. And I felt that she really didn't want to discuss them with me because it was too emotional. And so she just put them in this box, and I didn't know about it. And so what happened was I also found uh, sentence fragments. So she would write two poetic lines and then another two poetic lines. And then what I did was I took those lines and I created poems. Did your mother always write poetry? Well, what happened was is that it all started back in 1971 when I took a course in creative writing at Post College. And my assignment was to write a poem. And I was 20 years old, and you know, when you're that age and the teacher assigns you this, you go into a total panic. <laughs> and I was, and my mind was going very quickly, and I said to myself, well, when I get home, I'm going to tell this assignment to my mother, and she will write a poem for me. Well, that was wrong. When I got home, she said, no, no. She said, you write the poem, and I'll correct it for you, and I'll tell you whether or not it's good. So with that, I did that. So she was writing poetry all along. No. Uh -huh. So then, <laughs> so then uh, I went, and, and she said it was terrific. So I went and I handed it in. And I felt wonderful about it. I came home that evening, and she announced to me and my father, she said, you know, she said, because of your assignment, you gave me an idea to write a poem. And we both said, what? <laughs> and she said, yes. She said, sit down, and I'll read it to you. And with that, she read me and my father her very first poem that she ever wrote, and that was Duet. And that's really what started the whole thing. And I often say to myself, if it was not for that assignment, would she have written poetry? And I can't answer that because I don't know. No, we don't know. No. 
But you see, when she was in college, she was an English literature major. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, she did very well in English composition. She won several awards. But she never wrote poetry. And this was her first try. And uh, because of that, she continued to write. So really, every night that I came home, she'd say to me, well, sit down, I wrote another one. So I would sit down, and she'd read me these poems, and I'd say yes or no. We would decide on a title. I would tell her about punctuation. We would have our little fights, you know. And I'd say, no, take that line out or put a period here. And she'd say no and yes. And it would go on like that. And it went on like that for 35 years. Wow. And then we published, I published the work because she had passed away, mm -hmm. and I had promised her that I would do that. But then, as I said to you, after I finished that book, something told me to go through her drawers. And because of that, I came up with this second book, which is a companion to the first, Songs of You, a postscript, because it's really a PS to that book. And also part of this book, which is very interesting, is that when we moved from our home in Brookville to where we are living now in Manhasset, uh, we had to divest our house of many things. Mm -hmm. And one thing we had to get rid of were our 1,800 books mm. that we had collected throughout the years. And what happened was is that whenever there was a birthday or any kind of occasion, my parents and myself, we would always give one another books as gifts. Mm -hmm. And in those books, when we would give them, my parents wrote little things to one another, little notes or, or whatever. So that when I was going through all these books, I had to divest them of these little sayings. But I didn't have time to read them. So what I did was I tore out the pages on which they wrote these things to one another because I had to pack everything up very quickly. Mm -hmm. So then I remembered that box that I had saved from the move with all those little poems. And I have one section in here called Encores of You with 32 of them that I had saved. And I'd like to just read some of sure. them to you to give you an example of what they wrote to one another when they gave one another these books as gifts. And I titled this one, Those Blue Eyes. Those blue eyes are my reason for everything. Those blue eyes I love so well. Always I will stay for a million tomorrows, always in your arms. And this is what my mother wrote to my father. She gave him a book for some sort of occasion, and this is what she wrote to him. And then she wrote another one, which was very nice, and I titled it Devotion. She wrote, Immovable in my devotion, renewable in my love. Aww. <laughs> and then another one you she think wrote. they liked each other? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and be. it was incredible because they would, each evening they would sit in the den and they would discuss the books that they gave to one another. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And if I walked in, they'd say to me, what do you want? <laughs> We're in the middle of a discussion here. And then I would say, OK. But that's how your mother got your father, didn't she? Yes. Because he's, he was much older than her. Yes. And what happened was, is that it was amazing. She was 12 years old, and he was 17. And she arrives at the beach in Far Rockaway, and the first day that she got there, she laid eyes on this handsome lifeguard, David, and she fell madly in love. And As only a 12-year-old can. That's right. <laughs> but she wanted to meet him, and she didn't know how she was going to meet him. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so she brought him books. So she brought him books. <coughs> And it was very interesting to me because she did not interest herself in what he was interested in. She wanted to interest him in what she was interested in. And so she never stopped with the books. And she brought him books to the beach. Meanwhile, he was interested in girls. <laughs> he wasn't interested in her. And so she forced 
these books upon him, and she would really assign him books to read. I can't imagine this little twelve-year-old, you know, with this big life going. I know it's amazing. <laughs> Here, read the book. <laughs> read the book. But somehow she was interesting enough to him so that he paid attention, and she was different enough because what twelve-year-old is going to really go to the beach with books and say, "Here, read these books," or "You should read this." It's really, it's really amazing. Yes, it's it, it's a different, isn't it? Different picture. Absolutely. I know. And that's how they got together, and that's how she got him. And she continued this for five summers. But each, <laughs> each winter, what she would do is at the end of the summer, she would give him books to read over the winter. They would exchange addresses, and they would correspond with one another. And I can imagine the letters that she wrote to him demanding an answer back. <laughs> yeah, I can't How do you like it. this? What do you think? And he would write her back, uh. and she would wait for those letters. And that's how she got him. <laughs> and because of that, that's how he developed his love of literature, which lasted for his entire lifetime. And their whole life really revolved around books, because every occasion, as I said before, mm -hmm. would be met with a book. Like my mother would say to me, uh, it's your father's birthday. He wants such and such a book. Go get it. Or my father would say, your mother wants such and such a book. Get that for her. So and that's how it went. Yeah. So um, they obviously had a very strong affection for yes. each other. <laughs> yes, they did. They were madly in love. <laughs> yes. And um, you told me a story about what happened <clears throat> after your father died. And mm -hmm. my question to you is, do you believe in ghosts? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, you have to tell us about this because it's really unique. OK, well, my father passed away at 4.10 in the morning. And uh, about three weeks after he passed away, um, my phone rang. And um, I thought it was my mother calling me because in our house at the time, uh, my mother was in the right side of the house and I was in the left side of the house and she would always call me from her phone to my phone. And I thought because she was so upset after the passing of my father that it was she who was calling me. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the clock and it said 10 to 4. And I picked up the phone and all of a sudden I heard static like I've never heard before in my life. And through that static, I heard like, like a vacuum. It, it was just, I, I never heard anything like that. And through that vacuum came my father's voice. Hmm. And it said, hello. Like he always would say hello to me. Well, I mean, I was so, I, I wasn't expecting this. Bet you didn't get back to sleep that night. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> and I took the phone and I threw it. And I was shaking. Mm. And then I realized it was my father. And I felt so bad. I, I said, I said, please, I said, don't be mad. I said, I wasn't expecting you. Mm. And I said, I'm sorry. And so I relayed that story to my mother. She couldn't get over it. And then a few days passed. And then what happened was almost every night or every two nights thereafter, the phone would ring between 10 to 4 and 4.30 in the morning. And so what we had to do was we had to take the phone off the hook, her phone and my phone, we took off the hook every evening at 11 o'clock. And we did so until we moved. We could not leave the phone on. And that was the most amazing thing. And I knew that it was my father. I mm. knew there was no other reason. This occurrence had never happened before, and then when we moved, it stopped, and it was amazing. Yeah, that is yeah. an amazing ghost story. Yes, it is. I should but hook it's you true. up with somebody I know who's a ghost hunter. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to go. Do you want to read some poems from the from the book? Yes, yes. And what's amazing to me is that I found something also that my mother wrote back in 1996, and it really, she was thinking of fame 
and achieving fame. And I guess she felt, because she was always very different. She had a tremendous creative sense about her. And uh, she just felt that somehow something was going to happen that she would be noticed. But it came after she passed, and I am the one now to do that and to carry on her memory. And this is what she wrote. It's called A Greatness of My Own, The Achievement of Fame. How exhilarating. By trying the untried, I have discovered a path, a passageway into confidence and immortality, poems interacting with the ingenuity of my ideas. Thus, I have affirmed the possibility of triumph. Versed in language, I am reduced by what I have achieved to one word, magnifico. Someday I will be famous, not for singing in chorales, but for heightening anything that I touch. And you will have to push your way to get close to me. <laughs> that's self-confidence. <laughs> that is. <laughs> so actually, that's what you're doing, because this, it is is. this is not the, this book is not the end of the line. No, I also <laughs> found more papers, oh. and I'm coming out with a third book of hers. And what she did was she wrote poetic dissertations about books on love that she read throughout her lifetime. And I found these papers when I discovered this, and I was totally, I was really in shock because I never read anything like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wrote it in a poetic manner, and they are, it's really an appreciation of these books that she, that she read. Mm -hmm. And that's the third book that's coming out. And then there's even going to be a fourth, and that's on Shakespeare. I found a manuscript that she had written years ago on Shakespeare, and that will be the last. Okay, well, maybe not the last. Uh, maybe, I <laughs> maybe don't know. Not the last. <laughs> and I think it's interesting because you were telling me that um, you had met somebody who was interested in turning this into a play. Yes. The uh -huh. authors who watch the show are, you know, that's everyone's yes, yes. ultimate dream is to, is to have your book turned into a play or a movie or a TV show. Well, the thing is, is that this person could not get over the story behind these books. Mm -hmm. they, think it, they thought it was very, very unique. It is. It's beautiful. They can't get over it. And they, they told me that in order to do this, that uh, I'd have to have a screenplay developed. Mm. So what I decided to do was, I decided to write a biography of my parents' life. And so that's what I'm doing now. And I have only two more chapters left to go. And then when the book, when the manuscript is done, I'm going to have it published, and then I'm going to have it sent to this person. Also, about a year ago, there was a Broadway producer who was interested in the story, but he too said I would have to uh, get this developed into some kind of a book or get a hold of a screenplay writer. So with this book, I'm hoping I'm going to send it to him, and I'm hoping maybe that somehow we could take that further, because I feel that this also would be excellent for a play on Broadway with the poetry and the story incorporated. And all somebody into writing songs. Yes. Putting, Absolutely. Putting mom's poems. Yes. Music, right? And yes. I'd like to read the first poem that I found uh, with regard to this book. And the thing that struck me was when I first read it in her notes was one of the lines is about an egg. And I said to myself, my mother wrote a poem about an egg. And then I continued reading it. And it turned out to be a terrific poem. And I titled it, The River. A river runs past an old rock shaped like an egg. Raw, insistent, she pulses through the night. Icy shadows bruising the air creep out of their closets to become ghostly monuments, abstractions wanting to be warmed by humanity, only to find a void. And it's the same type of poetry but it's different. You can see a difference now because my father passed. Mm, yeah. You see, it's not as... It's not light. No. She, I, I, what I noticed is that uh, there's two kinds of poems. There. I mean, I, and there's more right. than that. But right. there, there are the ones that are full of light. Yes. And then there are the winter poems, I call them, because it's yes. always about ice and yes. snow and yes. leak branches. and Yes, uh, yes. 
And then another one that I'd like to read is that she wrote this, it's called Songs from the Snow. A foot of snow has fallen, and like my life, it slipped 